I'm Arthur Motes, and I'm here to tell you about my new book, The Motes Theory of Life. If you haven't picked up a copy yet, I strongly encourage you to. This book not only is a fun read, but it's a guide to helping you become a person of impact and inspiration. If you are ready to take the next step to improving not only your life, but those around you as well, go get a copy of The Motes Theory of Life, and it's available at MotesTheory.com. What's up, what's up? It's the Arthur Motes Experience with Deke. I'm Arthur Motes, and that's my main man, Deke. What's up, bro? Man, you know what it is over here, man. Just another beautiful day. Another day we get to re- record a podcast that is brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sports booking app. <sighs> Safe, secure, reliable. Y'all know what we talk about every time we come up in here. We always got to give love to DraftKings, DraftKings because not only are they the top-rated sports booking app, but they also are giving out free money. I mean, we talk about up to $1,000 in deposit bonus money when all you have to do is when you sign up is use the promo code MOTES. I mean, that's a simple code, right? Very simple. I mean, I feel like if I can remember it, which I should be able to remember it, you can remember it. Why can't you remember it then, all right? Use the promo code MOTES, that's M-O-A-T-S, so you can receive up to your $1,000 in deposit bonus money and just get an opportunity to make some money, baby, because that's what it's all about. Just the opportunity. 100%. And as we sit here, we have another opportunity. We talked about the opportunity to go 11-0. This would have been about a week ago. Then it got moved (laughs) to Sunday. And now we're sitting here Monday morning, 9 a.m. for a matchup that should be tomorrow night, which is Tuesday. So if they make any switches, we've already time-stamped it. Y'all know we were recording, all right? But (laughs) I love our odds even more now. (laughs) Who wouldn't? And and here's the thing. Here's the thing. As much as... Steeler Nation, we're a little upset, we're a little irritated with all Mm -hmm. the schedule changing and and all of this type of stuff. Now, you could ask, all right, how's this going to affect us long term, or just maybe even next week Mm -hmm. when we play Washington, just because we're going to have a shorter amount of break. Dude, for this game, this definitely helps us a lot (laughs) for this specific game. (laughs) Huge, huge (laughs) boost. I mean, just think about when we talked about our schedule, right? This would have been probably two weeks ago when we were looking. We said at this portion of the season, we said realistically we had three teams that really stood out. That was the Ravens, the Bills, and the Colts. So when you can take which what we both kind of felt was going to be the toughest of all of those remaining games, and I mean, they're sitting here, I think it's 23 players that they have on the COVID list, and I think 11 to 13 of those guys are actually starters. Man, when you can take that many good players off of a team like this on top of being a heated rivalry as well, man, yes, indeed, you're going to take this, man. Because, dude, we know at this in, at this part of the season, it's all about finding ways to win. And not only finding, way to win, finding ways to win, but also trying to stay as healthy as possible. So my thought process is not only are you going to get a team that's very much wounded in terms of just the uh, the players and the the overall pedigree and productivity of those players being out there not only do you have a clear advantage there but i'm hoping that we can get a scenario like jacksonville we can get a uh, get a scenario Mm -hmm. like cleveland where since we know we're going to have washington on five days rest after this game as long as it stays on tuesday night well hey man we get ahead and handle business like we're supposed to like we definitely should man you could rest these guys an extra quarter Maybe even more, depending on how the game goes. And that, I think, will help out even more so the following week against Washington. Nah, dude, definitely. I was thinking the same thing coming over. You know, Benny Snell, it's looking like he's going to be the starter here. Uh, who We're missing who? Tewitt, so we're missing James. Bugs, yeah, so, Connor. So Hawkins. our list is uh, James Connor, Stephon Tewitt, Gerald Hawkins, Isaiah Bugs, Kevin Dotson. And then the two coaches we have on our list is Danny Smith and Matt Canada, who won't coach in the game. We also have Jalen Samuels, who is just injured. They ruled him out yesterday with a quad injury. So as it stands right now, we have, um, geez, I'm drawing a blank, Benny Snell, um, Anthony McFarland, and they, I think, moved up Trey Edmonds yesterday, I want to say. So those will be the three backs coming into this game. And then since we're just talking about the whole rosters for uh, Baltimore, <laughs> I had to pull up the list because I, I don't have this memorized. All right. <laughs> So for Baltimore, they are going to be without Lamar Jackson, Mark Ingram, J.K. Dobbins, Mark Andrews, Matthew Judon, Patrick Richard, Patrick McCarry, D.J. Fluker, Willie Sneed, Trace Masorley, Matt Skura, uh, Will Holden, Calais Campbell, Brandon Williams, Justin Madu, uh, Maduboik, I think they said Maduboik, 
Then you have uh, Jihad Ward, Broderick Washington, Pernell McPhee, Jalen Ferguson, Iman Marshall, Khalil Dorse, Tavon Young, and their long snapper Morgan Cox. And that's just strictly players. We're not even talking about coaching staff and organizational members as well. Well, I'm wondering, too, uh, is it confirmed all those guys are going to be out? Yeah, yeah. So everybody that I just read off for both Steelers and uh, Ravens will not be playing on Tuesday. Okay. So... Because I wasn't sure if maybe the, a percentage of them was contact no, no. tracing or so, close contact and well, they were going to wait. Thing. So even whether they were contact traced or the guys who actually tested positive, similar here in Pittsburgh, how Connor tested positive, but I think to it was a contact trace. Just because of the amount of days, those guys aren't going to be able to play on a Tuesday. Now, if the game got moved again, well, now the guys who were just contact tracing because it's a shorter period for them, they would be able to return. But as it stands today at 9 in the morning, we have not heard anything about the game being moved. So as long as it's not moved, the guys that we just read off won't be out there. So Wow. And right now for Baltimore also, that uh, yesterday would have made their ninth consecutive day of having positive tests. And it's important because that's what was going on in Tennessee when they had to move multiple games. It wasn't because they kept having uh, – I mean, excuse me, it wasn't because they couldn't stop the outbreak. It was just they didn't know – where it was coming from because they kept having a positive. I think they ended up going 10 or 11 days with positive tests as well. So it's going to be interesting to see today how it works out because that's the big thing, man. You can't have any more today. That, that's, the, that's the goal, at least, hopefully. Yeah, and we were talking yeah. off the mic. It seems like they're trying to play this game. You know, Oh, without they, a doubt, man. They want to play this game. We, we talked about yesterday where, uh, where we watched Denver go out there where they had zero quarterbacks on the roster due to COVID and contact tracing. And we saw them make them go out there and play that game. And it was funny, man. It was funny watching them try to go out there and have uh, somewhat productive, just try to move the ball offense without quarterback play. I mean, essentially running the Wildcat the whole time. The guy they moved up, he was on practice squad on Saturday. They moved him up that night. He plays in the game as the quarterback Sunday. It was a mess. And, yeah, seeing that, that made me feel like, all right, the NFL is definitely going to get this one locked in. Even though it's funny, man, I do feel like the NFL kind of put themselves in a bad situation, though, because it's, I feel like they want this game because of the ratings. They want this game because it's Steelers-Ravens. We know everything that goes into it. We know a lot of eyes are on it. And I do feel like they kept pushing for it and pushing for it. But now I feel like it's going to – I don't want to say it's going to hurt it, but I don't think the ratings are going to be anywhere near the same because of just the sheer amount of people on both sides that aren't going to be playing in the game, man. I think it does hurt them a little bit, man. I think the other side of it, too, could be it's the only thing going to be happening on Tuesday night. Well, that's a plus, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking this. Now, we mentioned about hopefully we could get the backups in, we could get some rest because we're going to be on a shorter week against Washington this week uh, coming up. But at the same time, dude, Shit has happened in the past with this rivalry where oh, we can't yeah. completely be putting our guard down. No because question. were you on the team? Ryan when, Malik yeah, I was Absolutely. gonna say yeah. I think we were like firing on all cylinders this yeah. season and we thought this Ravens mm-hmm. game, this was one of their down years. But the thing and the biggest difference with that was it was more so their quarterback and maybe a couple other players were down. We not sitting here talking about twenty three players with multiple starters on offense and defense. I, even that year, I remember, because Mike Wallace hit us with like a 99, a 97-yard catch. We were in uh, cover one. And, I mean, everybody knows with Mike, he's a fast guy. He makes one guy miss. He takes to the house. That was a big part of it. Then, obviously, you know, we had some other uh, adversity that happened during the game. But that was a bigger part of it. And, I mean, even Ryan Mallett, I, I still don't feel as bad with Ryan Mallett because of what I saw with Denver and the guys that they had to put out there yesterday. Like, I think we can all agree. Ryan Mallett is, is light years ahead of that situation on both sides, whether you're talking Taysom Hill or, or was it Philip Lindsay, Kevin Hunt, Hitlin, and whoever, whatever other guys you want to put out there. So I do think it's going to be different than that scenario just because it's so many more players out and, and so many more key players out as well, man. Yeah, because if it was just Lamar, and they still had their weapons right. on offense or something. Right, with RG3, that's different. It is, yeah. where... I think that's I don't similar think, to that Ryan Mallett situation there. I definitely think it's a downgrade from having Lamar Jackson out there, but I still think RG3 can play for sure. We saw it in the game last year. Yeah, but my thing is this. Even last year, he still had his guys. I mean, you're talking about... Oh, uh, no, right. Out. Yeah. No Willie Sneed, two Willie running Sneed, backs are out. Listen, Mark Andrews is their number one receiver, right? We said they use their tight ends 
like how most teams use a traditional wide receiver one. So you lose your most prolific pass catching threat, Mark Andrews. Then Willie Sneed, who we know is there. I mean, outside of Hollywood Brown, he's probably their most consistent wide receiver. You lose him as well. Now you bump up Dez. So for the nostalgia people, you'll love that. But in terms of impact in the game, this would be Dez's, what, second full game up? Not really concerned about him like that. Then you talk about the running back room. No Mark Ingram, no J.K. Dobbins. Those are their two premier backs, their two leaders. Now, I got to see with Gus Edwards if he is healthy or not. Because that was the other thing with him. That's why he had been missing time. So it's going to be interesting to see just from a running back standpoint, which guys they're going with. We already said they don't have their fullback either who's on the COVID list. So from a running game standpoint, I don't even know what that's going to look like. We already know their offense line was banged up from the last time we played them. Remember the two, uh, the tackle went out and the the O-line, the guard went out. Now they're going to be without one, two... See one, two. It looks like two more offensive linemen in terms of Matt Skura, Will Holden. Oh no, the starting right tackle who came in after the guy got hurt, DJ Fluker. So he's out as well. So now you're down to your third slash fourth offensive tackle, which you know versus our guys is a uh, recipe for disaster. Yeah, even I'm, even not having two, we still yeah, got some good guys. There. No question. And then they're they're down their center as well, Patrick McCarry. So even. When we're talking about just RG3 without his running backs and, and pass catching weapons, his old line, like who's protecting this man right now? That's why for me, I'm just like, when I say I think it, it does hurt it a little bit, I don't think we're going to, even Denver's situation, Denver had 90% of their roster. It was just the quarterback play, and that's what made it look so bad. Right now, I don't think we understand what this is going to look like. I'm, well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Like, I don't think people you, fully understand that. You man. definitely have a different tune to you, <laughs> yes, dude. As opposed to us playing Jacksonville or like the Cowboys, yeah. Because whereas, they like, still you're, had starters. They still. Had, I mean, you're gonna tell me when we played Dallas. <laughs> Omari Cooper couldn't start here. CD Lamb couldn't start here. Like that's what like, Zeke Elliott couldn't start here. So even though they were down Dak, I'm like, man, outside of the quarterback, and they still had. A viable quarterback. I mean, and Garrett they had Gilbert, names we, on defense. Right, yeah. And we saw Garrett Gilbert, We said in the XFL, he did produce. We just simply said XFL to NFL is different levels to that. Denver didn't even have that. So I'm like, at least with RG3, yes, I do think the quarterback play will be comparable. But when you talk about what, pick your poison, it's like the Dallas situation inverted. Dallas had no quarterback, everybody else around him. This you got, at least you have a backup quarterback on RG3, but you have nobody around him. So, to me, was RG3 in a great situation enough to really make you, oh, yeah, this guy's got it? No, not not since no, his rookie not. year in Washington. So, now you're going to take him and have a shell of that offense. And for me, I said, at least if you have starters out there, I always feel like those guys are capable. But I know when you start getting down to your second, your third, and bumping up practice squads, practice squad guys to move up, it's a, it's a reason. You know I mean, in terms of guys being on practice squad, it's a reason that guys are twos and threes. There's a reason for that. And if you're just putting in one or two of those guys, that's fine. You you can you you, you can get away with one or two of those guys. You're not getting away with ten. Well, excuse me. In this case, up to twenty three players, and half of those guys are gonna be you know backup caliber guys having to replace those guys. And and we're talking about the Steelers here. Who let's not is that like this isn't a down year. This is a great year for us right now. So when you mix all that in together, like, yeah, in fact, I'm a little surprised. I'm actually I'm not surprised. This is the reverse psychology. I feel like in normal weeks when it was Jacksonville, we've, when it was we've, Cowboys, we've flipped the rules here. Yeah, because it was uh, Jacksonville, definitely Cowboys, flipped rules everybody's, oh, yeah, we're going to blow them out. <laughs> we're not worried. And I'm like, okay, you saw the Cowboys game win. Y'all are crazy. Even Jacksonville for a little while, it was like, even though we were in control, it didn't get gory. Now this week <laughs> where it's the complete opposite, where literally they're going to put out there, you might as well put Pitt. Uh, just the University of Pitt's football team out there, and that's going to be the equivalent upgrade to quarterback or RG3 and play this game. Like, it's, it, yeah, it, to me, it's night and day, bro. <laughs> night and day. So it's a reverse psychology thing then. Yeah, We're not trying to get too hyped right, up. Yeah, I want to be, oh, man, oh, oh, we got to stay down, man. We got to really take this serious. Woo! Man, if I ain't take Gary Gilbert serious, I'm definitely taking these guys serious, though. Lord, whoo. I don't even know who 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 is the who, who's gonna be the starting right guard for this team right now. Who's the starting right tackle for this team? 
I mean, that's what I'm saying right now. Who's the long snapper? We talk about special teams. Right now, they don't have a long snapper. Imagine if, Ka- if Cam Kennedy was not out there. Who's snapping? Pouncey is not a long snapper. So for everybody that thinks, oh, just take the center and put him out there, two totally different things. That's like a, a, a first baseman and, and an outfielder or, or, or a three-point specialist and a seven-footer. Like, they're night and day, man. It's night and day. <laughs> just because they both shoot the ball does not mean they're the same thing, baby. So yeah, hey, who, who's the long snapper? Is that your X factor? I'm for the just game? asking. <laughs> you 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 can pick whatever X factor you want this week, baby. <laughs> I'm just over here like, man, how, how, who do you sign? And that's the thing too, because of the COVID weight stuff, you can't even sign anyone off the street. Well, that because that's what my neighbor was saying to me. Yeah. He's like, hey, uh, why can't the Broncos just sign a quarterback right, right. off the street? You, you I'm like, can't. he's gonna have to wait for like a week. List. Yeah. So you're stuck. And now that, that was the other reason why I'm like. Dude, at least in the past, if it would have been a scenario like this, I'm like, man, they could scounge and find veterans that are available via free agency or guys that are, you know, fringe roster guys on somebody's practice squad. You sign them and you're good. You get a couple days practice. I'm singing a totally different tune right now. But knowing that you don't even have the luxury of replacing these players with quality players, we talked about just the difference between Big Ben and then Mason and then Duck. Now, imagine if while we're talking about Duck, it was, okay, well, not even Duck. We're we're looking more so at Paxton Lynch or JT Barrett. It would be a totally different mindset. And that's what they're doing right now. Not necessarily at the quarterback position, but throughout their their roster. Yeah, Yeah, running back. That's what it's coming down to. And when we talk about, yes, are these guys NFL caliber? Sure. But we can all agree on the different levels of these players. And that's why, for me, I'm so confident the Steelers are going to get this done. And it's not even going to be... I don't think it's going to be close because of that. Because I just know they don't have the personnel. They can't even go sign a guy off the street. Like, at least in, in the past, like I said, man, I can go, man, hey, look, I see you still has got some guys on their practice squad. I'm going to go sign one of those guys. We've seen that before. We've seen, even here in Pittsburgh, we sign a guy from the opponent we're playing that week. We'll sign him from their practice squad. He'll be on our active roster for the game. We Deion done Kane that. last year. Absolutely. Gareth White. Yeah, but we, we don't have that, lu- they don't have that luxury this year. And yeah, that's a game changer, baby. <laughs> that's a big time game changer i love it i, I don't feel and this the thing too people's like well man d- d- is the does the game not count the same no no no, it counts i want us to go in there and put a hundred on them trust me anytime you play in the ravens you want to absolutely destroy them demolish them beat them to the point where they start to like it that's that's always the goal you want them to <laughs> like it all right and now we got the perfect scenario to make them like what we about to do to them today or tomorrow so i'm excited about i hope they don't move the game I, i'm liking these these 23 COVID versus r5 like we're, we're good to go all right we'll, we'll go out here we'll play this game do it how we're supposed to do it have a little tuesday night action and then we're good to go you know what it is the branding is strong that's what it is because mm-hmm. i think a lot of the people i think myself included too where i'm not it's weird. I like I said, it's like a role reversal yeah, here, man. where I'm just kind of just trying to stay steady with mm. this. Let's let's mm. lock in. Let's get this stuff. Let's stay healthy. Get out of here. Mm. I think for whatever reason, Steelers Ravens rivalry, or just who the Ravens have been throughout their uh, history and being the NFL, you just you don't want to let your guard down. But yeah. all right, dude. I you know mm. I'm buying everything you're saying, but L- listen, I, I'm, I'm just giving you my feeling. That's listen, all. Listen, man. The same <laughs> way it's been a role reversal on the mic. We can even look at our attire. Typically, when it's cold out, you're dressed like it's hot out. You got shorts on. You might have a t-shirt and just a scarf. You in here, you got jeans. You got the coat on. You got the hat on. I'm in here with a short sleeve shirt. So yeah. you know what it is, Roll Versa day to day. You even sitting up a little bit. So you know what? <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm going to slouch my joint down. I'm feeling deakish. So yes, man, I think the Steelers get the job done, bro. I, I would say 27-13, but I don't even need 27-13, baby. I'm going 30 burgers today. <laughs> Is, is that how I look? The, the, oh, hold on. Even, even more even slouch. Lower. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you know, so I just I just feeling good about our Steelers, man. You know, we got we got a nice squad going on right now, baby. We finna cook them. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. I love it, man. We hey, get hey, out there today, baby. Hey, bro, this is the NFL, man. Come on, you... <laughs> You can't be you can't be counting your chickens before the hatch. But look, man, we got seven. <laughs> and he's on an MVP tour right now, man. Revenge tour starts. And listen, listen, Lamar, you already got it the first way. All right. But we still owe RG3 because remember, he got us at the end last year. He think he's gonna get that. He he, he gonna jump in the fight and now he wanna jump back out the fight. Nah. The door is locked. You are in this fight, RG3. You gotta get your serving, baby. So that's how I feel about it, man. We winning, man. I ain't even hey. Psh. Man, won't even need to coach this game, bro. Just, just put the guys out there, bro. 
We're going to have Mason in there in the third quarter. I feel it. <laughs> I got nothing. That's, that's good. That's pretty good. I don't know how you sit like this, by the way, bro. My back hurt. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know either. Yo, no, it's, not, it's not comfortable at all. <laughs> I don't know either. I used to do it all the time whenever I worked downtown. <laughs> I'd be at my desk. I'm not kidding you. Like I would be like my my hand for I guess people that are just listening, yeah. you're not gonna be able to see, it, but my my hand would be like up here, Jeez. like on the keyboard. Like yeah. I'd be down here, like looking up at the screen. And, like people would walk cow, by. They're like, bro. "What that? Like how does he sit like this?" Yeah. I was just like just just for that little two minute. I'm like, man, my back was a little tight. I sit up. I don't, I don't like that. Yeah, now. I'd have like my chair like as low as possible <laughs> and like lean back Jeez. as possible. I don't know. It's my thing. I, yeah. But yeah, man, I'm feeling great. I feel like it's us, man. It's us. No, I understood. Us, understood. Man. So what's what do you think the game plan is? Because I'm thinking, I'm good. I, you know, I said, let's go out guns blazing and everything the first time. Now with the circumstances being different, I'm good with trying to get something balanced going. Get oh, so, so it sounds like you've changed your tune a little bit. Well, now, dude, now that, you want to try some new stuff? Want to get the ready game going? That's because it's a completely different no, ball no, game. No. If, if anything, this is the game now that I would love to see Ben go out here and throw it. A thousand times, Bro, man, the, from start to finish, baby. This this the one. Well, here's the thing, dude. I'm a, I'm just about winning. I'm I'm not about the stat padding and all I, this. I am. I am for for the MVP race. Well, dude, I'm gonna need him to cook because I keep seeing the other guy do some crazy things and it's hurting me. It's hurting me. All right. They even put up the little stat last night on one on Sunday night football. It was cute. I was like, oh wait, yeah, wait, wait. So right. wait, so you're jumping, you're you're jumping uh, on here. You're jumping on the Ben for MVP. No, no, I'm just simply saying you just said that you don't care about the stats. I'm saying we've been pushing him for MVP, right? I've seen your work. Wow, all of a sudden, now you want to, oh, it's not about stats. If, so you've just been wasting time these past 10 weeks? That what you tell not me? at all. Not so at what's all, going because on here? Now that you got a little steam, you don't want to talk about it? <laughs> no, because I don't equate the MVP just to stats. That's the thing. I mean, they play a big part of it, though. Unfortunately for the, the <laughs> voters and all that stuff. It's only unfortunate when it doesn't benefit our guy. I don't know about that. I think stats are a part of it, but I mean, there's there's a lot of other things that you got to play into it yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. And Ben has good stats, so yeah. but like, I'm you know, if it's just oh, we got to come out here with the Ravens, Ben throws for four or five touchdowns so he can get in the MVP race. How's that? I don't know how, but, what but, that has to do with MVP. But no, 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 he's already in the race. We've already said that. But we're talking about him being able to keep pace because we keep seeing another guy. You know, he, he keep coming in here and doing this wild stuff. And you're just like, bro, how are you doing this? It was one quarter. How'd you pass for like two and then some yards in one quarter? Like, this is freaky. Like, it's, it's that type of stuff. This It's like, yo, Ben, I need you. But this is the perfect game for it. If you you talk about, listen, at, at, at the college level, when, when guys win the Heisman Trophy, bro. we're not going to sit here and act like they don't have one of them games versus San Jose State Community College Technical Institute, and they go out here and throw for for, for four, 500 yards, five touchdowns. And they're like, oh, yeah, man, he's, just look at the numbers right here. I'm like, come on, bro. We, we know that's who they just played against. So I'm looking at this the same way. Ben go out there, light them up, and then from there, they're not asking how. They're not asking how he got those yards, how he got those touchdowns. We just simply at the end of the year going to read off his numbers compared to Mahomes' numbers, compared to Russell Wilson's numbers. We, that's all we're going to do. We do it every time. I don't want to be doing that, though. Why not? It's benefiting benefit seven this year. Uh, no, not against those guys because well, they have well, the God of your numbers. Well, well no, no, no. More, more so Mahomes. More so Mahomes. Him to Russell is closing. It's, it's a little bit closer now. I actually, I, yeah, based off numbers, I mean, yeah. it depends on what you want, but because Ben has the better touchdown interception yeah. ratio, mm -hmm. he's definitely been playing the cleaner ball over the past yeah. like four or five weeks here. But but the, I think the biggest reason why I keep saying Mahomes is because the biggest thing that Ben has over all the other guys is the record element, right? It's like okay, well, they might have the better numbers, but we have the better record as it stands right now. Kansas City only has one loss compared to us being undefeated, so that gap isn't the same. Whereas you look at Russell, they've dropped a couple. You look at Josh Allen and Buffalo they've dropped a couple obviously Breeze is hurt Brady has been inconsistent so we can go down the list of these other players people say Rodgers too but I point to like dude he had like two or three games where they're yeah. just complete duds I'm like how can you I, do I that agree. but everyone gets enamored with the the game like last yeah. night or some of these other games where he yeah. completely goes off yeah but I, I still feel like Rodgers is outside looking in I personally think it's Mahomes Ben Russ. I feel like those three are like the front runners of that conversation. I feel like Aaron Rodgers, if he continues like how he did last night, well then it's different, right? But we I mean you just talked about it. Some weeks he looks great, 
then he's had some games where he's just like, bro, where, where's Aaron Like, at? none of those other three quarterbacks had a, had a game like he did against yes. the Bucks, where it's just it looks like you dug. give up yeah. almost. Mm-hmm. The, the only issue that Russ has had was the Bills game was the biggest one, where I think they turned him over three Cardinals times game that game. Too. Yeah, he had three, two games back-to-back with multiple turnovers in a game, which was rare, unheard of for them. But we talked about the only reason why I think that that would benefit him was because you saw how bad his team looked as a whole when he didn't play great. And then you see when they win, obviously he's always playing great whenever they win games. So, and dude, I understand. Like, dude, Mahomes is like awesome. Like anyone yeah. that watched the game and anyone that's just watched him in general, he's awesome. But like my Those whole thing, things that he does, you're just like how. And I agree, hundred percent, hundred percent. But my whole thing with the whole MVP stuff is like I I try to look outside of the whole stat stuff. I, I yeah. say valuable, and like I I do think Mahomes has a completely stacked team though. Mm-hmm. Still. Like, he has Tyreek Hill, he has Travis Kelsey, Le'Veon Bell is his second running back. Mm-hmm. I mean, come on there. Uh, Andy Reid, the offense, like, all that stuff. Like, his stats, like, just how they play, they're going to be gaudy. Mm-hmm. So, if we're going just off that, like, if Ben was throwing the amount that Mahomes is throwing, he would okay. have those type of stats, too. So, like, that's why I just don't, I'm not going but all based off is, stats though, I, I do look at it like this. When people say if he was throwing that much, he would have the same type of numbers. If he was completing as much, you would have those same type of numbers because he does throw. We are very much a pass heavy. Well, atta- no, no, no. Well, here's wait. the thing: we're doing we're doing a different style of no, offense. No, 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 no. We take shots downfield. We said even this year, even though Ben has connected, we said that we have struggled a lot on the deep ball accuracy. There's whereas, been a lot of pass interferences though. Either way, where, where that doesn't but, show but, up in the stats. Either sheet. way, either way, we've seen pass interference. We also seen him missing. Whereas with Mahomes. That hasn't been the case. He as does much. have Tyreek Hill though. That's that's like my other point too. I, I and it's not a, it's not a knock on how like Mahomes is great, but yeah. no, it goes back to the whole MVP uh-huh. thing. Our receivers were looked down upon very much last year. Ben comes uh-huh. back now. We got we got a great. But receiving we also court. added Chase Claypool and Eric Ebron. So, I understand so, that, but the, and, and Juju is healthy. It's a lot of factors. But Ebron man. Ebron was like nothing. The Colts fans they were happy to get rid but of. But he Ebron. had tw- was it twelve touchdowns the year before that. No, I get that, yeah, but they and, were and they said last year because he was hurt in the whole situation where they lost their quarterback. Brissett went down for a little while as well. They kept trying to push Ebron to come back out there, and Ebron basically said, "I'm not healthy. I'm not coming out there," and that's what made them really get mad with him. No, I get that, but all right, put Ebron with basically about 25, 26 other teams in the league. Okay. I don't know if he's doing what he's doing here. I don't think that was the energy when we signed him. I don't remember that from you at all. When, I you, would, when we signed him, you you were singing a different tune. Don't don't get a picture. Try to downplay him now for Ben's benefit, man. No, because I know what you're I, doing. You, I, you just, it's you not just, a downplay. You just downplayed our receivers. No, because that's what I mean. I you believe in our running backs. <laughs> you downplayed our tight end. Like, bro, what are we I doing just, here? No, I believe in his talent. So our guys you, are nice. We if got you, a squad. If you put him with Brady, Rodgers, it, but that's our, what I mean. He would do good. A, our offense is loaded. Don't act like we have a bum offense. That is not the case. Our offense is loaded. You're trying to downplay our offense right now to help Ben's case. You are, bro. You just said our receivers are bad. No, nope. you said our tight. You they said, said Ebron's overrated. Year. I'm talking about this year, though. We, we got Ben. Year. We got Ben. It looks different. I wonder why. We just said Ebron's a new addition. Claypool. No one expected Claypool. I mean, you take away Claypool's touchdowns. What are we looking bro, at? Right that's now, bro, that's become such a common thing now, though. We draft a rookie receiver and they do that's really a good. Common it thing. is. James Washington didn't do that in his first two years. <laughs> no, if you get the playing time though, that's that's James it. Washington was playing though. Santone, he got some opportunities. What? James Washington was getting opportunities though. Nah, I mean not like that. Not not being featured like that. You had San Antonio Holmes, mm-hmm. Mike Wallace. Um, I know AB in his second year when he started okay. getting featured again. Like there's, mm-hmm. it's just been so many times. We draft young receivers. They come out right. and they so, blow so, up. So poo-poo the receivers to make Ben better. I got I'm not piss them. Just did, bro. No, no. It's I promise cool, I'm man. not. All I'm right. not. We got bum receivers minus Ben. I got you. That's what you just said. Nope. That's not what I said. So what are you saying? Are our, our, our receivers good no, or not? No, I'm actually taking what everyone else was saying last year and saying like, yo. But, but we're talking about this year. I'm huh? saying in this year in general. But how do we go from everyone saying we have terrible receivers that can't get open? But we, we, I just told you. I said last year, remember, Juju was hurt. We already talked about the quarterback. Yeah, but he wasn't play. doing good when he was in, though, either. Like, it wasn't but, but like that. This was the thing, though. Even with Juju, right? We said that his injuries were still a little bit different than James in terms of him. Well, actually, him and James both did similar things in terms of going out there and not being healthy. Difference was James wasn't finishing games where Juju would still be out there. And we would say, well, man, he's not getting open. And then after the season, they say, well, he's dealing with injuries the whole year and things like that. So I chalked that up to that. We already talked about the quarterback play being an issue last year. That helped that aided the the lack of productivity with those guys and then when you bring in a talent like claypool you bring in a talent like ebron that does help out so it's multiple variables and then we said at the quarterback position you upgraded you go from mason for a couple of games duck for a couple of games to ben 
Like that should equate to more productivity as well. So I don't think that it was the receivers were terrible a year ago. I think you upgraded them and they're healthier and they have a way better quarterback now. No, I'm not I'm not saying they're terrible or not, because whenever we did offseason stuff, I'm like, I think our receivers are gonna do well because right. we get Ben back. Like we under, you on that. We understood that for the most part last year. You, I think there there were times where like our receiver, like they're yeah. they're not playing up the par completely Correct. here. But they I mean there there's a lot of factors. Yeah. But all of a sudden we get Ben back. That's a huge difference, man. Yeah, but we already said just a quarterback in general, quarterback brings that to the element. It's a reason why we said with Garrett, uh, with Garrett Gilbert two weeks ago versus if Dak Prescott was out there. Does that mean Amari Cooper sucks? Does that mean C.D. Lamb sucks? No. It just means that they don't have the quarterback play right now. So, yeah. Dude, there, there were legit question marks about the receivers, though. Like, we, we're not questioning any of those three Cowboys receivers. Okay. But, like, throughout the course of last season, I think there were legitimate we had question about marks. Juju. Juju was the biggest guy because we said he's a number with that. one receiver. Yeah, yeah. We said Deontay as a rookie, he was doing what he was doing surprising us. James Washington, we felt that he was having a quiet good season. And we saw statistically that showed. But we said with Juju, the reason why it left a sour taste in our mouth because all of the talk, all of the hype all offseason was we got better because we lost AB. Juju was ready to step up and be the number one receiver. When he did not do that, that changed how we looked at our receivers. Even this offseason, we didn't have question marks about Deontay. We said we thought Deontay would take off like he's doing. We said he's in line for 100 catches, 1,000-yard receiver, being the number one guy. He's been showing that this year. But if we didn't have Ben, what do we expect? Another five, 600 yards? But even him? last year, we said, we said, even last year, the reason why we were very hesitant to give Juju a pass was for Juju to have such a bad year. Deontay and James Washington produced. Their numbers were good. And that's what we said. We said, so it was more a juju thing, and we were uh, questioning, could he be the guy or not? Even this offseason when we drafted Claypool, could juju be the guy? It wasn't a, our receiver is going to be good enough to elevate the play. No, it was, could juju, we need a a legit number one guy. And now we have that. Well, I mean, whichever one you want to be the number one guy could be the number one guy. But now you see, like, Wait, who are you saying, juju? No, no, I was just saying. (laughs) You got JJ. I just said in general. You know, I, no, no, no. I thought I said Deontay. I said Deontay. No, no, no. That was me, dude. No, no. But I, when we talked about Deontay expectations, mm. think about that. We talked about Deontay think, expectations. I said that he would be a thousand. Uh, we both said a hundred catches or more. We, yeah. And we said a thousand yards. And we both said that he probably is going to be the guy. We we didn't put James Washington in. We was really talking Deontay and Juju because Claypool wasn't on the roster at the time. I think so. And then you flip flop. No, no, no. Here's what happened. Here's what happened. You flip flop and said Claypool. No, no, no. Here's what happened. I think. I think off season. I think off season. Because I I never said Juju. For a fact, I didn't say Juju. No, you did. You did. I think. I think it. The first or second or and third game. And I never switched to Claypool either because no, I never no, no. Claypool. I said, commentators <laughs> up here talking about, oh, he's drawing all this coverage. And I'm like, I'm watching the tape and that's not the no, case. No, no, no. You had a wise hedge. You had a really wise hedge <laughs> because I brought it up. I said, who's the receiver one? A lot of people are saying Juju. This was after the first two right, or three games. I remember games. that, yeah. And I said, mm-hmm. it's Deontay, but I mm-hmm. think it could be Claypool down the line. Yeah. When is that going to happen? Mm-hmm. I don't know. But you said, you know, with the Juju thing, like he's been the most reliable right now, yeah. not getting hurt. He's been catching everything mm-hmm. thrown his way. But I you all ultimately- was number one. I no, never said he was number one. Yeah, though. you ultimately said, you said, listen, I don't think we have a receiver number one right now. Everyone it. plays yeah. their role. And then I think the next week I said Claypool was one. Yeah, you, so I you said definitely that, switched. I said, yeah. the, I said the time is now. All I know <laughs> is when we had to, to officially put something down, I, when we went and talked Deontay, that was the guy. I haven't swayed from that. We said 100 receptions yeah. coming in. And, it, and he's on pace. He, he's he's going to be on pace. He's on pace for 1,000 plus receiving yards. Like He's on pace. He's doing that. And you see, I mean, every week when he's healthy, he is the most targeted receiver in there. When he's not healthy, it, it becomes more juju, and then sometimes Claypool gets bumped up in terms of his targets. But whenever Deontay has been healthy, he's been a double-digit target guy every game this year. So that's why, for me, I'm like, I'm not swaying from that. Even when Claypool went crazy a couple games, even when Juju have his couple games, I'm waiting on James Washington to have a couple games. And then it's going to start flipping to... Well, maybe James Washington is the guy. Now. <laughs> I don't know about that. I, I'm just all right. We, we saw is, how quick it's quick. He has how quick been really slip, good. Bro. He has been really good. Well, we just know how in an underrated role. Yeah, super underrated, bro. But we, we t- already we talked talk, about yeah. that too, man. We talked about it. But that, that's just my thing. I'm like, man, it's flavor of the week with these guys. But at the end of the day, they're all very talented. That's kind of what we were getting to, and that's why for me, I'm like, as much as the easy out is just to say, well, Ben's back. That changes it. It's more than just him coming back. Him coming back was a huge part of that because the quarterback is a huge part of a passing attack. But we're not going to act like our receivers aren't good because they are really, really good. That's all I'm saying. I know you were quick to be like on Tyree Kill, Tyree Kill. But I'm like, bro, 
we have uh, outside. Okay, so they have Tyreek and then Sammy Watkins. And was it McCall Hartman? Travis Kelsey, best tight end in the game. Uh-huh. He got a first round pick at running back there too. Okay. Le'Veon Bell. But even with Le'Veon, the same way you you gave that energy about Aaron Rodgers, right? What has Le'Veon done this season to make you say, "Well, we got they got Le'Veon Bell." He hasn't shown that he's been he's well, been helping, dude, the, but he hasn't done it. that. Though. They're just passing it like no other. That's what it is. Okay, I'm which just, is fine. Like if, yeah. if that's what's if that's what they want to do to win their games and everything. Just, but like that, that's, that's my thing. I'm like that's we where haven't the stats seen, are coming from. Though. I'm just saying we haven't seen this whole oh it's Le'Veon, it's Le'Veon, it's Le'Veon. Has he been playing well for them? Yes, but that impact it hasn't changed what they've been doing. They still were the same Chiefs before he's gotten there and even after he's gotten there. That's that's my only thing with that. So every time you bring Le'Veon up, I'm like. That's more nostalgia than actual 2020 productivity. Uh, dude, but he would be he'd be the starter for the Steelers. He'd be the starter for I don't know what percentage of the teams, at least half the league. If if they didn't have money wrapped up in certain guys yeah. and just have the structure within their teams, right? Like he would he's I he's mean, still would, a top 10, top 15 guy in the league. I, I hope so. I, I, I mean, so. that's just sight unseen too. Like yeah. if you put him in a certain scenario, I think right. he could be top five, top ten again. My whole thing is I feel like with that, we're still just kind of projecting it though. Because we haven't technically seen that level play from him this season. Now, we know the Jets situation was was terrible. And then, obviously, he jumped on a moving train with the Chiefs. And they're not making him the feature. They use him. And they, I like how they're using him in some of these passing situations. Yeah, he does. Some of the every every time runs. they get him the ball. Yeah, he's producing. Yeah. I, I, that, but that's what I mean. I don't get why they don't stick with that type of stuff. They're, I mean, they're just passing it like no Maybe other. Because they have a guy that can throw the why, ball no, no, every he, time and, and be successful. No, but here, I get that. 100%, yeah. I get that. And the stats are showing that. At the same time, you just beat the Bucks by three. And this is not a... I mean, they're 10-1. They're 10-1. Mm-hmm. So this is like really yeah. splitting hairs here because mm-hmm. it's like... There's like a Steelers Chiefs thing and going they weren't on right up big now. On the on the Bucks as well. Let's not like they weren't up big on them also. Well, no, but I I mean they were. What was it? It was close against uh, the Panthers. Panthers too, only the yeah. Close game against the Chargers. So I'm just not. Exactly. And we said the Chargers are a good team. We've seen that they don't execute in the fourth quarter well, but they're a good team. Man. They have all the stats and everything, but they still have close games. Is my point. Yeah. And Whereas we, like they're ripping on the Steelers for that type of stuff. We're just playing a different was, brand I of felt ball. Like that was. Like a couple of weeks ago, then I are they done? Everybody... Are they done with that, or am that, I just, I just switch, still yeah, have the chip? You, you still, yeah, you still dwelling on that. That was three, four weeks ago, man. <laughs> I saw no, no, no. I saw a post on Twitter, dude. Bleacher Report. They said uh, well, that's the problem right there. You looking at Bleacher Report? Well, here's what happened. Man. They were uh, they were going off about the Chiefs game yesterday mm-hmm. with Mahomes and Tyreek Hill and everything. Oh, yeah. Chiefs, Chiefs are amazing. Ten and one, best record in the NFL. Did you see this? I did, but they, they edited it. They edited the tweet after that. So you took that much offense to them posting the wrong. Oh, 10 and one. My bad. Let me repost it. It's disrespectful. Jeez, Louise. <laughs> Well, that's what's going on here, dude. It's a it's a stat battle where everyone's getting enamored by the stats. My, my thing is this: we're ten and zero. I just asked you this question. All right. So it's disrespectful because we're ten and zero. They're ten and one, <laughs> and we debate who should be the number one team. Right now, just think about this. Well, it, it, no, no, I mean, it's it's, it's multiple just, things. Wait, it's wait, number wait, one wait, team. Just, it's MVP. This, so this is my thing. So Deke, just think about this. All right. All if right. the Steelers had won the Super Bowl last year and came out and were ten and one this year. And some other team that was eight and eight the year prior, and now they ten and zero, and everybody was talking about that team, that team, that team. When we're sitting here like we the Super Bowl champs from this past season, we only lost one game. You want to feel some type of way about that? Listen, I'm like, bro. seriously, no, no, I'm, seriously, no, 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 no. Would you feel some type of way about that? Yes or no? Uh, Would probably, you feel some probably. type of Here's, way about that, bro? That's and that's saying, fine, bro. and it's fine either way. Yeah. I'm good with however anyone wants to think. You okay. can think how you want to think. You could say what you want to say. But that's the thing. I guess we got a mic. I could say what I want to say, and yeah. that's it. And I'm and I'm good with it. I'm not yeah. going to be getting into I, I just some simply, type of beef about it. I'm just going to yeah. give my side of it. I think Ben's MVP. I think we're yeah. the best team. That's all. I just ask that while you're out here throwing out these, you know, topics, these takes, <laughs> just look in the mirror every once I, in a while, man. I understand. Yeah, if it was the same way with the Steelers. <laughs> You'll be losing your mind. You'll be up here like, are you kidding me right now? We got Ben. He was a Super Bowl MVP last year. You see what he's doing this year. We're un- we only lost one game, and that was to a Raiders team that always plays as tough. I mean, you would have been going on this rant. But that's being a fan, though. I mean, it's... <laughs> And I'm like I'm not gonna deny that. I, I think I am decently self aware so sometimes. That's being a fan though. If my guy's playing good, I'm sticking up for my guy. That's how it is. I could dig it, man. That's all. I could dig it, man. I, I mean, could dig it. What, uh, did you want to talk about that? Uh, what Chiefs Bucks game? Did you, is, yeah, is there anything around the league? I guess we're skipping around here. Do we need to finish anything up with Steelers? Well, yeah, because technically we never gave our score predictions. Well, score predictions. Yeah. I, I did have a hot topic or two for the Steelers Ravens. All right, what you got, man? 
You sure? Yeah, yeah. Because I want you to go first before I go. <laughs> With hot topic, you have a hot topic? No, no, no. But what I'm about to go to, I know you, you've, you, you, you're doing this. You've done it a couple times now. I'll get ready to start talking about something, and then you'll jump in. He'll be like, "Oh, my bad. All right, you go ahead." So all I'm right, just right, let right. you get everything you need to get out now. So then that way, whenever I do go, I can just go. <laughs> this, this actually might only be one hot topic here. Oh, this might only be one hot topic. Could it be? What? You got one hot topic. What? I think that's it. Oh. What's the what's the stat projections for Benny Snell? What's the running back yeah. split? I guess between him he, and McFarland potentially. So we're on the same page then, because I went there. <laughs> I was gonna ask you which, which one do you want to see out there more? Snow. Snow? I'm going with Snow. Yeah, because I thought you wanted McFarland train a couple weeks ago. It's you weird. said that, it's that weird. McFarland need more opportunities because he has the speed and the burst to get in and out. No, it's <laughs> it's weird. It's weird because if you have Connor as your main guy, uh huh. You're not going to be doing complimentary work with Snow because Correct. they're too similar, I would say. Okay. So if you have Connor, McFarland's the guy you want to compliment with him and get okay. the carries and everything. I just feel like Snow, it's almost you're repeating yourself. Okay. Now that Connor's out, <laughs> let's let's see what Snow's got, dude. I really do think he has the talent. Like you saw it in the first game with the Giants. But see, I've heard everyone talk about Anthony McFarland for the past six weeks when people have been talking about they want him to be the, the main guy game, in this game yes for, really? for how to fix the running game that's all people talked about and obviously this was prior to everybody going down with COVID but before that that was the big talk and the reason was they said that with Benny Snell and James Conner Outside of that one James Conner run where he reversed field, we've never seen him be able to be elusive to that standpoint. Him or Benny, we say they're one cut downhill guys. They will run you over, but they're not really going to make you miss. And with the O line blocking the way it's been blocking this season, that doesn't necessarily benefit those guys. Whereas with McFarland, because of how fast he is and his elusibility, you can just see how he can. He has the potential to make something out of nothing. And that's why people were so big on getting him out there. And then they also said not only could he make guys miss in the running game, but obviously when Ben wants to go no huddle, now you don't have to be out here with these weird personnel groupings where you have a receiver trying to play running back because we don't have a running back on the field. They said McFarlane could give you that out of element. So that's why for me, I'm like, man, I was a little surprised. I thought everybody would want McFarlane this week, especially going against the Ravens defense. That's going to be depleted. It'd be good to see him, you know, Show some of that speed. I, I know you even brought up a Kamara com, uh, comparison early on in the year. Yeah, I, I'm just saying, man. Like, c- can we see that? I thought this would be the game to see that. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so you're feeling it. You're feeling McFarland this week. Absolutely. I mean, what do we, have? dude? I don't think you understand. Like, you you, do, you really don't understand. <laughs> Maybe the I scenario don't. Right Maybe now, I bro. Don't. You don't understand the scenario right now. I'm over here like, listen, man, You're I, I your want chops. McFarland to get some, some action, get some touches under his belt. I want to see Ben stretch this field, you know, get get that timing on the downfield passes, get that get that on pace and things like that. Because So you're actually the, going with my strategy the first time. Yeah, here. yeah, wow. yeah. The strategy <laughs> it that is you completely talking about, flipped. It's uh, uh, this would have been a week ago, actually, because it's Monday. This would have been a week ago today when we recorded, right? And dropped it on Tuesday. And, and, yeah, yeah. So, so for us... I'm with you now. I want to see Ben come out guns blazing because I feel like worst case, even if you throw two pick sixes, worst case, you could throw two pick sixes and I still feel like we got more than enough to to handle this and still win and cover, which is the crazy part. Whereas in the past where they had Lamar Jackson, we said that first game, people forget the first half. People just kind of think of, oh man, we we won and, and we went going away and went technically... We no, it was still, close. I mean, we, we dude, talked about it. It was, it was a close. fourth down stop on on the two yard line, along with a, a pass breakup by Mink in the end zone that got us out that stadium. So for me, it was a different feeling. Like I felt like the way people viewed the margin of error versus Lamar Jackson. I feel like y'all have a flip flop. Y'all think that man Lamar is this bad quarterback? You can th- you can turn the ball over and get into a hole, and we're fine. We can come back on this team. That's not the guy you want to be playing from behind against versus RG three. And, and, and minus 23 players, key players, mix of starters and role players. I love this. I love it. In fact, man, I want to throw it. I don't want us to even run the ball the first quarter. Come out guns blaze and get on them early. You know, and then from there, man, you just, just jump on them and make them like it. You get up a 21 zip, man, first quarter. Dude, you make them like it. You make them like it. And then from there, now I want to see you run the ball. Heavy dose of McFarlane. Give me some Benny Snell football, especially late in the second half where you just demoralize. And that's, that's what I'm looking for, man. Okay. Yeah. And this is with Mason at quarterback? Absolutely. Okay. I, I, yeah, ben, ben is only getting two quarters. Can you rest the elbow? 
Wow, man. It's five. We got five days before we play Washington. Listen, I'm looking ahead. I'm, I'm fanning today. I yeah. really hope you're right. I really yeah, I'm hope. I'm looking ahead, baby. You know, I will be smiling. That, that would be a great day. Yeah. It'd be a great Tuesday night for I, me. I fully anticipate it being a good first half of football. Then after that, we just kind of like, jeez, is it over yet? This is this is, this is is bad. This is boring. It, it, it'd be like the Browns game. Remember the Browns game? We, all, we said that about the Browns. Yeah. We said, man, that second half of the Browns game, like, ooh, it was just... It was just Labored on, like, come on, man, can this game be over? Like, we know it is done. Like, y'all put y'all backups, and we got our backups, and we Let's can just not get it. hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's that's how I anticipate this game going. I feel I, first half, we come out, we click on all cylinders. I do, and, and this is why I say first half in that first quarter, right? Because I know the the whole Mahomes and Tyreek Hill, how they exploded yesterday. I don't think we come out as fast because we do have to remember this. We haven't been able to be in a facility to practice either. Remember, Coach Tom, he gave the guys, I think, three yeah, three days off. They haven't been on, was it Thursday, Friday, Saturday? I think they came in Sunday for the first time. And then, obviously, they'll practice a light practice today and then go out there and play tomorrow. So I do think, timing-wise, you could have a little bit, you could be a little bit off. And that doesn't have anything to do with Baltimore because, remember, they haven't been in their facility either, along with having the COVID players as well. But I do think that you could potentially just be a little bit off earlier on with some of these downfield passes, but after you know a series of two, baby, we cooking, we lighting them up, <laughs> full full aggressive, man. So I, I want ben, if Ben don't if Ben doesn't have thirty pass attempts in the first half, I'm gonna be a little upset, man. Wow. Actually, he shouldn't have thirty because then that means we not we not connecting on the big strikes enough. He probably have about fifteen completions in the first half, bro. Fourteen for fifteen. Yeah. What are you saying? Two seventy five, three touchdowns. Because what what, what Mahomes in the first quarter with yesterday? I don't Close know. Close to three. It, it was like 275, 250. <laughs> so so he needs to be in that ballpark in that first half. Just just be in the 250, 250, 275. He don't have to go over 300. Just 250, 275. He's good. <laughs> with, with, with a touchdown in there. And, and they'll be like, well, man, they blew out a, a, a Ravens team that was depleted. They took care of business. They did what they're supposed to do. Big Ben resting. Seven in the MVP conversation. Look at him raising. He, he says, I'll raise you one. Uh, uh, I'll raise you one, Patrick Mahomes. Like, yeah, it's going to be that scenario, bro. I feel it, man. <laughs> you, you're not feeling that? I want it. I'm good with Come it. On, but like man. I said, dude, like I said earlier, I'm not too worried about the like stats this. or anything. I don't like your MVP energy right now. I what do you mean? Like- I, oh, it's just that I know. It's just I, that I, I know. Just, I don't like, got to sell anyone. I just know. No, no, I know but that's the, MVP the thing, is. though. You sell it harder when he, when he wasn't deserving of it. And now that he's deserving of it, you want to take a backseat role. I'm not taking a back seat rule. I told but you, you I laid I laid it out. I told you no, everything. No, no, the MVP. No, no, man, no. I, I laid it out. Er, early on, man, the first three weeks, I couldn't get you to stop talking about Ben. You look on your social media, you went and stopped posting about Ben. Now all of a sudden this, you know, man, I ain't worried about the stats, bro. I'm just trying to get this dub. Trying to get these wins. That's what it's all about. Like, no, it's not. No, it's not. No, it is not. We got revenge tour. Revenge tour means comeback player of the year, MVP regular season, Super Bowl MVP. All right. I so, see it so all stats happening, matters. Yeah. Stats matter. I need my stats from my seven. I need them. And he's gonna give them to it today, man. He's gonna give them to us <laughs> Tuesday. I feel it. I'm just good with the dub. I'm just doing whatever nah, we nah, gotta nah, do nah, to win. Nah, and nah, I think nah, he would say the enough. same thing. It's that's just we're all about winning. That's nah, what's really about. Then y'all gonna be complaining at the end of the year when the awards go a different way. Oh, snub. That's who's gonna be snubbed. And I don't want to hear snub. I don't want to hear that. So let's take care of business now while we got the opportunity. Wait, what do you mean? What do you mean snub? For a fact, man. If, if Ben just goes on these next couple of games, just wins. Air quotes. He just wins. Doesn't play great. Just wins. And then at the end of the year, they give out the MVP award. And wait, then, he could play great and win and and still get snubbed though. No, no. But I, I see this. I think our our view of snub is different. To me, snub is if he doesn't even receive a vote because he hasn't received a vote in his career. I think he gets votes this year. Now him winning or not, I think that's going to come down to what he's able to do compared to Mahomes. But that just him comes not, down to the, the if he's not getting media votes, bias if here. he doesn't get votes though, that's that's a big time snub. That's all I'm saying. So I don't want to hear that, and I feel like that will happen if he goes on these next games of just doing enough to win, not lighting it up. So I want my man to light it Wait, up. Wait, but hold on, hold on. What if what if we have a different game plan though? And we're running the ball and then we're we're gashing run the ball bro, and we're bro, doing whoa, whoa, whoa. What, what week is this right now? Huh? What week is this right now? Well listen, dude. This, it's, this, this, what, what week is this right now? We okay. just said how many guys they're gonna asked, have out. What week is it right now? It's week what, <laughs> eleven or twelve? I have no clue. What game throughout these eleven weeks have we seen bro, our running game? This is lead? why just, 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 just Wait. tell me that. Just when have we seen it? We, we talked about Jacksonville. Jacksonville's running defense was terrible. We talked about Dallas. Dallas running defense was terrible. We talked about Cincinnati. Cincinnati running defense was terrible. So this, you tell me which defense we ran on to, to, to make you feel like this is going to be the time. This is why I wanted to go guns blazing <laughs> the first time. 
<laughs> but now they're. De- I mean, yeah, I guess you could say. Like if this, if this, no, this no. is the way. This is the How you've laid it out, though, this is a this is a notch below Jacksonville and Cowboys here. So I think we should be able to get some running oh, going. Oh man, come on, man. We we stuck, baby. Just just I don't even want to just th- just throw the wall. Just throw the wall. This is the week they throw it. I want Ben to it, listen. We don't have Matt Canada, right? He's on the COVID list. So this could be the week. What do you mean? That the Ben just takes just, the reins just and calls like... it, just, just calls it as is. <laughs> this is the week. We, we, you always been wanting it, right? You talked about it. I've seen people mention it a couple of times. If, if if not this week, then when? Are we going to wait till we got like a team that's full strength? No, let's try it on on a team that's down like this. I would love to try that out versus this team just to see because if it doesn't work great against this then it's not going to work at all. But if it works against this, then we can What, the running game? Or, or no, no, no. I'm talking shotgun. about ben, ben just calling okay. the whole way. Shotgun, empty, call it the whole time from the last game. We, have we not seen people say that? Listen, bro, I'm good, with it. Fr- yeah, I'm good with it. This is the week then. I, I want to see that this week. This is the week I would love to see him come out here. Because if you can't do it against this, don't ever bring it up again. That's all I'm saying, baby. This should be the week. Wait, what if we don't do it, though? We're gonna do it. I mean, you that's, think? Not, that's what you're bro, feeling. Is I mean, that is that no, an inside scoop? No, 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 I'm saying this like not for the whole game, but we're gonna do it because we've done it every game this year. We've seen a quarter, or, or you know what I mean, where he's predominantly out of the gun. You think we started this way though? I hope so. Okay. I hope so. <laughs> I, I don't know if we will, but I hope we do. Just just for that sake. For that okay. that part of the conversation, man. I would love for that. So wait, what's your verdict on Snow and McFarland then? Uh my verdict on Snow and McFarland. <sighs> I mean, Benny Stills going to get more touches. Well, yeah. I think the only thing that's been holding him back is the fumbles, really. That was it. That's why after yeah, but, week but one and two, we didn't is, keep going with him. We say that as if that is some like easy fix. We've seen when we talked about you know guys that, that have also had fumbling issues, how it isn't just a, oh, yeah, he fixed it this week. Like It, it becomes habitual. And we've seen it for guys that you know going on multiple years in their career now where they still have ball security issues. So for me, I'm not sold that Benny Snell has fixed those security issues, even if he has one game where he doesn't fumble. I'm, I, I need to see body of work for the, for the fumbling thing to go away. That is not a week to week. That's a full body of work thing. And I need to also know, like, when, are you going to fumble when it's timely? Like, I mean, because we've seen him put the ball on the ground. In Broncos some, some, game. We had it locked up. Some bad situations. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's for me. That's my thing. Now, think about even with James Conner, right? How long has it taken him to where we said Jackson was probably the first game where he was running and it didn't like he was running to not fumble. It didn't like he was running to not get hurt. He was just running. With Benny, I'm like, I need to see you get to the stage where you're, you know, at least running out to fumble. And then from there we can go from, all right, now you're running confident again. We haven't got to that stage yet. So, yeah, man. You want to see McFarland? Let the kid run, man. You feel him McFarland? Let the kid run. <laughs> but I, I, I'm torn because both of these guys, you know what I'm saying? They're, 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 they're both on the, the podcast, show. yeah. So yeah. so that's my issue. I'm like, They were t- both good interviews. They too. were. It typically, it's like, all right, if I don't have one, if one of these guys went on the show, I lean towards the guy who's on the show, kind of like with Chooks and Banner. We were like, well, we're going to lean with Banner because Banner <laughs> came through, gave us a dope interview. <laughs> but with Benny and McFarland, and I think with both of those guys too, because like they had some negative surrounding them initially and then you get a chance to talk to me you're like bro that's complete nonsense what everyone else is saying like these are good like guys just in general so yeah i'm a little torn man i I would love for both of them to go off i'm leaning towards benny snell though but i think mcfarland should if it was me i'm i'm featuring mcfarland if i was going to do it but i do think that benny snell is going to be the guy just because Everything that we've seen from the reports, yeah, everything from a depth chart standpoint, Tomlin and just from it. yeah, like I feel like he's gonna be their guy. And he fits what the Steelers want to do. They the Steelers want to be a physical run first team. They just haven't been able to. And obviously, when you have been you you have a luxury of being able to go away from that. But the Steelers want to be physical. That's what we preach from day one. We want to out physical teams. We want teams to look across and know that, hey, man, for four quarters, I'm getting hit in the mouth. And you heard me say it earlier. We want to make you like it. I want to beat you to the point where you're just like, look, man, I like it. Just keep, just keep hitting me. All right. I, I know it's nothing I can do about it. So let me at least enjoy myself. That's what the Steelers want to do. So Benny Snell is more of that than McFarland. I yeah. just feel like with McFarland, you obviously have the home run, big play threat ability. And against a depleted team like Baltimore, if you get up early and you have one of those back-breaking explosive plays, man, I feel like that will kill their spirit, that'll kill their will, and ultimately make the game like how I'm projecting it to be. (laughs) 
can we see a world where one of these running backs goes off and we're talking the next day? What's the running back room looking like here? People will do it. And <laughs> or do you think it's just Connor still? People will do it, but it's Connor. Okay. It's definitely Connor. But people no matter what we that. see, no matter what we yeah, see. Yeah, without a doubt. McFarland without goes for doubt. 200. <laughs> yeah, without a doubt, bro. It's still going to be Connor. I think if McFarland goes for 200. <laughs> because this is going to be the issue. The, the caveat is always going to be, or the rebuttal is always going to be, well, these guys had 23 players out they haven't practiced for the week. That's always going to be Connor saving grace. So... As long as, I mean, now, if these guys go out here and, and 300 yards on the ground, something just ridiculous, another 70 through the air, like, yeah, that, that's a different conversation. I think it'll be a legitimate conversation, yeah. at least. Now, whether it happens or not, they'll probably stick with right. Connor as being the main guy. But, but dude, we're talking about it'd be hard to ignore. Stats, like, but, but for that to happen, like, I don't, I don't see video game type numbers from McFarlane or Snell right now. I, 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 now, could they grow into that? Sure, but. As I've, I mean, what I've watched from them throughout, you know, for Benny Snow, two years for McFarland, ten. We games. haven't even seen video game numbers yeah. from Connor. We Bell was, seen that. I mean, yeah. Bell definitely did. Willie Parker did here and there. Mm-hmm. Like he'd, he'd go for over two hundred yeah. sometimes. It was crazy. But Willie Parker's a good running back too, though. Like it, it I feel like Benny Snow and McFarland, they can grow into that, but they're not Willie Parker. They're not in that conversation yet, from my perspective. And I think that's another thing. It's like. Willie, I mean, people forget. Man, Willie was good. W- Willie was doing some things. What do we talk about here? Like, Willie Park is a good player. Like, there was no guessing around Willie. Can Willie do this or not? Like, we know what Willie is, man. Yeah, he was good. He was We're, definitely McFarlane good McFarlane and Benny Snell, we haven't seen that from a, a, a capability standpoint or a consistency standpoint either just yet. And that's, that's kind of why I'm getting up with those guys. For sure. What was wild with Parker is... I think that was his rookie year where he came off. He was undrafted out of North Carolina or seventh round pick out yeah. of North Carolina. For him to do that, and then he strung together like four or five seasons of over a thousand. It might have been four seasons of over a thousand yards, a couple Pro that, Bowls. Right? We, yeah. We've seen James have what? One? Uh, no, he hasn't had a thousand yard season yet because he got hurt. He, he got he hurt. Had, it was yeah. it was, it was on like pace. Nine, he was yeah. nine seventy or something like that. But we just saw that was on one year, and we say he was on pace and still didn't get it. We haven't seen that since then, though. Whereas we talking about Willie, you said this multiple times, like. For you to do a multiple, like one time, we James one year when he got close, he was balling. So just just think about we talking about a guy doing it for multiple years at a high Dif- level, definitely like, different era too. True, yeah, because you would consider uh, James's receiving yards and receptions along a lot with, more with this, yeah, yeah, like where mm-hmm. oh man, that contributes to how good he's been playing. Yeah. Where Willie Parker, man, it was more or less just running the ball. You weren't Shit. doing a lot of the pass catching stuff, nah. and, and running in an era where. People knew you were running the ball. You using fullbacks. They got big, like inside linebackers out there. Like they're trying to smash the run. So it's a different, different time, man. Different time. Uh, what do we got now? Score predictions. <sighs> yeah, man. You go first, man. Because I feel like <laughs> you're gonna drop your score prediction. I'm gonna drop mine, and then it's gonna carry right over into what I need to say after that. So I'll be good to go, man. Perfect. Okay. <clears throat> uh, well, with everything we said, I'm just gonna add all this together to my prediction. We're only here. a two score, a uh, two score <laughs> team, or, or no, no, or is that two? No, it's three scores. I'm considering all these yeah. new factors at play. The Ravens no, are it's decimated. Only two scores. It's a fourteen point game. Yeah, yeah. We're, the we're Ravens are decimated. Right. Steelers were ten and zero. We got most of our players yeah. in this game. Our starters and everything. We got an MVP front runner right now. Yeah, or is yeah. it the conversation? At least in the conversation. Oh. You know how I feel, but I, I get how other people are gonna say conversation. So I get it. Uh, I get well, it. Well, even if he's a front runner, then, then man, we I'm we gonna say be front way runner, better but, than, than 14 points better than this team. Lord, but we you know be 14 what? points better than them as is. Now you're gonna tell me they got 23 guys: Lamar Jackson, running backs, receivers, linemen, linebackers, <laughs> at long, long snapper included. Oh man, we gotta be more than 14 points. Not with with the MVP. With MVP, man? I don't know what to Rookie tell you, Rookie of the dude. year, Claypool? Cool. Dude, it's Herbert. Defensive, it's player, Herbert. Of the, defensive player of the year, TJ Watt? What? Dude, Rookie of the year's over. It's Herbert. Dude. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. Don't, don't let the recent... And see, what you just did right there is what people do with my homes. Y'all see, y'all see a, 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 a glimpse of a... All right, man, he's having one of them hot games right now when you get recency bias. So, obviously, Herbert, he did... Dude, it, he's been doing it all year, though. But, but no, no, no. Herbert struggled yesterday against the Bills. Herbert struggled in the big way. What did he still man. throw for over three hundred yards or whatever? It, 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 it was it was a struggle. Trust me, it was a big time struggle. Okay, man. okay, big time struggle. But 
Well, it's just, it's just off of that, but no, the, no, you're right, you're right. Though, this is this is what people yeah, do. They be, see the Mahomes stats and the, stuff. Oh, he's he's the guy. Well, in the past two games, Mahomes has lit it up, and he did he's, it in prime dude, time. Dude, he's too, he's man. definitely done things. I'm just like, oh yeah. my god, dude. Like the holy shit, man. Like, I, I'm just being straight up. Like he's the been throws unreal. That, that he's are been typically unreal. terrible throws. Like he's making them look like high percentage passes, which is mind blowing. Like I mean, we've pointed out stuff even with our quarterback here in, in, in Ben, where we're just like. Man, he got away with it. It worked here. But then we said with Mason where, or Duck was like, look, it doesn't work right there. And then we're seeing with Mahomes, he's doing stuff. He's just like, bro, this is a terrible throw. And he made it look easy. Like, it made it like that was how it was supposed to happen. Like, if you're a quarterback watching Mahomes, man, you're setting yourself up for failure because he's doing certain things you're just not supposed to do. And you shouldn't be able to do it. But he just has the gift, man. Yeah, for sure. No, and I can't yeah. deny that too. And especially after the Super Bowl win and everything, it like, factor, clutch, it, no, he has it. Yeah, he has big it all. time performances. My thing is, like gaudy I said, stats, it's yeah, it's the gaudy highlights. stats. Highlights. I know it's the gaudy stats and the highlights that does people it, are getting does enamored it, with. Does it when it's crunch time? He I does. Mean, he does all that That's on fine. the big stage. I got nothing against. Checks Mahomes. every box. Best player on the team. No debate. I got nothing against Mahomes, dude. I really saying, don't. Man. I really don't, because you're like, right on like all this. He is the best player on that team, and on it's, the it's not even a debate. Yeah, I'd say the same thing with Ben at the Steelers. Well, I feel I feel like people would debate TJ Watt though. Mm, I, I people would definitely debate TJ. They would definitely debate him. Some people even will fight with Minka as well. I'm just throwing it out there. I, I I'm saying they're wrong, but that's all right. Whatever. Teach their own. I, I, Teach their saying, own. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. Teach their own. Yeah. Um, no, Mahomes is unreal. Like I said, though, I just think people are enamored with the stats, the highlights, and all that type of stuff. Whereas, but, but he does, like, if you watch him for four quarters, he does everything you want. No, I agree, dude. Gets but I just, right I just feel like we're we've been playing a different brand of football, the brand of football that was glorified for how many years with the Patriots, mm-hmm. the controlling the clock, the short pass and stuff. We mm-hmm. have taken our shots here and there, and like I yeah. said, we've gotten those pass interferences, which don't show up on the stat sheet. It's cool. I'm still good with Ben with MVP, man. I'm still good with that. I wonder how many passing interferences the Chiefs draw. Because I feel like I right no now clue. you just make it as I don't think I, I didn't see any ones who get uh, passing interference calls right now, man. I didn't see any yesterday. I know that. <laughs> well, I mean, they didn't need to. You, you saw what Tyreek was doing. But here's my point, dude. They they still only won by three. They still have won yeah, some but, of these but, close but I games. I feel like the three point is misleading. The game was not a three point closeness. I mean, at times, like I said, dude, it was, Brady. It was bad. I mean, Brady. Let almost let the Bucks not get back into it to that's a certain a, that's point. That's a Brady issue. How's that a knock on Mahomes though? No, it's not a knock on Mahomes, but I think that's the thing where, uh, dude, uh, it was still a close game, and that was with the Bucks making all these errors. But, but I think what you're looking at differently is, but this is the same stuff Mahomes, we've gotten knocked for. No, 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 no. It's a difference because when we talk about close games, we're talking about close games with Dallas. We're talking about close games with Denver. We're talking about close games with. You know those. T- Wait a minute. Whereas yesterday, what we're referring to is the Bucks. The Bucks are still in the playoff conversation. Heavy. They're still probably what the debatable between them and the Saints. I feel like the Saints. Well, no, the Saints do have the the, the advantage on them. They beat them what twice now head to head. But they're still a, a, a very good team. I think that's why it's a little bit different as well. But not only. Is are the Bucks, and it's not a knock on it. So it's still the only play who's in front of them. But with Mahomes. Throughout the year, he's lit it up. It's not as if we talked about with some of these other guys who've had bad games. We haven't seen that from Mahomes just yet. Mahomes is still doing Mahomes-like things. So even if their team is playing and it's a closer score, that still doesn't take away from his performances. Whereas we said with Ben, even though from our perspective, he's been efficient. Efficient is great for the team. That that's not great for winning an award though. You gotta light it up. You have to stand up. You have to do certain things that make you say, "Wow." We, we with us, we're talking about wow for stuff where it's like, man, you saw he checked that right there. That's a read right there. He got him in the right play. Now the receiver did the rest of the work. He caught it at five and then took it to the house, but he had to do all the other stuff to get him in that call, and that was great. We hyped that up. Whereas with Mahomes, it's like you don't have to hype that up when you look at everything else he's doing on top of that, and that's the biggest difference right now. But they've had close games against crappy teams. Panthers come to mind. I mean, they they did lose to the Raiders. They actually should have lost the second time to the Raiders. Raiders dropped a couple picks by Mahomes, mm-hmm. and they dropped a couple. So balls. Raiders are a bad team now. No, I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying that. I'm I'm just saying like they've had some close games throughout as well. We did too. I just don't know where. I don't know. It just seems like people are glorifying the Chiefs. I, and like I said, it's because of I the just, stats and the highlights and no, stuff, but which is I, fine. I Whatever you saying, could. I get what you're saying, but you're not going to tell me Raiders and Panthers. 
and the Raiders bust. just got housed to the Falcons. They got like beat that. by the Falcons, but we said that was it, terrible. Yeah, but we said any given Sunday. But they still. What, what are the Raiders sitting there right now? Six and four. Six and five. Six and five. No. Oh yeah, because they just dropped it yesterday. So going into that game, they were still sitting at six and four when they played uh, the the Chiefs both times. I think they had two two losses or one loss. Uh, two lost the first game, one lost uh, the second time. Like there's, or excuse me, three losses total the yeah, second yeah. time. So they were still viewed as a, a really good team. They had just came off of some really impressive performances. Whereas with Dallas, since Dak has been down, their most impressive performance was against us. We talked about the teams earlier in the year with Denver. Now, obviously, they had the code situation. That's hurt them even more. But they haven't looked the best. The Giants have, I mean, the Giants and the NFC, any NFC East team right now has been pretty bad. But those are some of the reasons why. And if we're talking us versus Baltimore, your argument, I feel like, is perfect because we're playing the same teams. The Chiefs have played better teams just in terms of when you talk about their close games they have been against better teams whereas with us our close games have been against not as good teams and that's been the biggest knock but I don't look at it as it's a knock on Pittsburgh you can't control who you're playing it's not like college where you get to create your schedule you play the teams they put out there in front of you win as long as you keep winning you keep going but when you're splitting hairs and that's what you have to do when you're talking about best team when you're talking about MVP all of that comes in, and right, wrong, or indifferent, the Steelers are on the short end of the stick based on the teams they've played as it compares to the Chiefs. Dude, it's it's actually not far off at all, though. If you look at the strength of Scott, I think it's literally right. like they're a position or two behind us. I'm That's with, it. I'm with you. I'm I mean, they the close game with I'm the Chargers. With you, now, you could say, are the Chargers better than what the record is? Because what all are they, right. three and seven, four and seven yeah. now? They went to mm-hmm. overtime. So, like, I think there's like three of, like, if you look at the schedule, because I looked at this last night, if you look mm-hmm. at, there's three or four games. I think on each side where it, there were close games, and then there yeah. were a few blowouts on each side. Okay. So it, it's actually way more equal, in my opinion, than what it seems. It's just they have the stats, they have the highlights. We're playing different brands of football, that's all, but people are getting enamored with but, the stats but, and the highlights. But no, what you keep leaving out when you talk about we have some close games, we've had some blowouts, they've had some close games, they've had some blowouts. When you look at the teams in which eight and three Browns, dude. I mean, in in the okay. Bengals. I mean, people were saying with Burrow, man, is this a frisky team? They okay. just came off the All Titans. Right. You know okay. what I mean? All right. I, I mean, the Chiefs. Which it, 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 it sounds like you trying to like one minute want to hype a team up. Do you want to pull them down? Hype up, pull them down to make your argument better. Who you? Now well, you hype up the Bengals. You talking about well, the Bengals sneaky team? Well, You're we were talking about the Bengals it, weren't better than the Chargers though. It wasn't. We never said that. And they just came off a win against the Titans. I understand that, but we didn't say that the Bengals were better than the Chargers. If anything, we looked at the Titans differently. I, I don't know about that with Burrow teach his own bro no I teach yeah 100% yeah. but that that's the thing dude I don't I just feel like we're not getting glorified or worshipped in the media because we're playing just a different brand of football we're we're focused on controlling the clock doing short passes and all this other type of stuff but that's leading to winning on doing short passes when we take a lot of shots downfield but then yeah the, the, <laughs> the downfield shots don't show up in the stat yeah. sheet completely with Correct. there's drops here or there and then there's also yeah. the pass interference and so. some incompletions as well it happens, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But, dude, I, I don't think all that stuff shows up in the stat sheet like that. Where all, all I'm saying is... All you, my homes, you, like, you they're passing it so it, much, man. The thing, though, you speak on it as if that's only exclusive to Pittsburgh. If you watch the Chiefs as much as you watch the Pittsburgh, dude, it, here's as the much thing. as you watch the Steelers, I feel like your opinion would change. Right now, I mean, you watch every single Steelers play. You watch every single Ben snap. So your opinion of Ben is different. You I've don't seen watch, the Chiefs. I've, no, seen, no, no. I've seen three watch, or four or five games of the but, Chiefs. But we're talking about watching every single game. I get it. It's a difference. And I'm impressed with Mahomes right? every time. I am impressed with him yeah. every time. I'm just saying, I, I really do think the stats and the highlights are, are definitely pushing the narrative a little bit. <laughs> A little bit. Whatever I, you I say, like, bro. <laughs> and I told you, dude, I told you, this is completely splitting hairs. We got a team that's 10 and 0. We got another team that's 10 and 1. And we got two mm-hmm. quarterbacks that are playing out their ass. So I don't, it's splitting hairs. So you got, you got to split hairs when it comes to this stuff. Cause it is, it is like, yeah, it's petty uh, whenever you're trying to break down yeah, everything. But uh-huh. I just feel to. like every hair that you split and you try to make it a negative for Mahomes, it only becomes more of a negative for Ben every time you say it like that, bro. But I don't wait. Cool. How though? Because you, oh, well, man, they're, they're passing the ball more. It's like, bro, we are a pass first team. We throw the ball a ton. When oh, we need to in the second half. Like, we, there's been times in the first half, we, okay. like, our offense is stagnant because yeah, we're trying to run yeah. the ball. Well, no, no, not just trying Whereas to run the ball. We take running, shots downfield and we miss. Their running game works. We take and they don't shots do downfield and we miss. We take those and we don't get the penalties. We talked about we don't always get the penalties. We said when we get the penalties, that helps us move the ball. When we don't, our offense looks stagnant. We go three and out. Yeah, but I feel like that's after we wasted down or two, we take a shot. And it's like, ah, oh, shit. Whereas, that's <laughs> how I feel. You call it wasting, but if it was a two-yard pass, it wouldn't be a wasting. It would be, oh, that was good, short completion. 
Yeah, we're moving it a little bit as opposed to getting no yards or negative yards. But sometimes we'll get one yard and you we look at that as a wasted down. Well, we could have thrown it and it'd have been a one yard completion. Oh, maybe, that's a good maybe pass. It's, maybe it's four or five yards. No, 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 no. Maybe it's it's four, just because five. Ben just, threw it versus just, running the ball. I just feel like it'd be four <laughs> or five we, yards. We could throw an incomplete pass and that wasn't a waste. That was a good throw. But if we run the keep, ball and it's a zero yard game, keep, keep ah, that def- wasn't good. Keeping the defense honest See, with that throw. that's what I'm saying, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so anywho, bro, your score prediction is 27-13. I got to stick with it, dude. I got to stick with it. We talked about all these factors and stuff, but you know what, dude? It's somehow going to be a two-score game. <laughs> I like it, man. So for me, man, I am going with 31-3. to I don't think it's close. I feel like the Steelers, if they play like they're supposed to play, even with them having multiple days off of uh, recently, I still feel like they take care of business. Baltimore is just under man. They're going to be overwhelmed, even... If early on in the game, they try to make it, you know, a, a uglier game, slow the pace down and things like that for four quarters, that is not going to work. We even saw that yesterday with Denver and the Saints, man. Uh, the Saints started out a little bit slow. Denver did a good job in the first quarter. Then after that, man, you just become overwhelmed. You just do not have enough. So I fully anticipate the Steelers getting the dub, man, 31 to three. And I think it's perfect, too, because <laughs> three, did, where did they get this field goal? Well, you got Justin Tucker. I mean, you, you get to the logo. He's taking a field goal. OK, you think it'll be early then? I'm just saying in general. Okay. Any, I mean, you wouldn't. I mean, even Denver got to the logo yesterday. Okay. You get to the logo, he he's good. He's money. That's I'm just wondering I'm at some point is it is it just going to be for saving grace to like not put the shutout, or is it going to be early in the game? I mean, when you are down thirty, if it's thirty one points scored, I don't think it matters if it was a shutout or not. It's thirty one points okay. scored on you. Like, okay. Yeah. So it'll be in the flow of the game where they kind of think they're in it a little bit. I, I, I mean, it could be whenever. It could be okay. the opening play. As far as I can say, it could drop kick it from the from the kickoff and they get it. I don't care. All right. Yeah, it's thirty one to three, man, and yeah, it's not going to be close, man. We just got too much for them. They don't have enough personnel right now. And at key positions. I mean, you talk about offensive line, you talk about quarterback, you talk about receiver, you talk about running back, you talk about D-line, you talk about linebacker, you talk about your secondary, special teams. I mean, depth guys, starters, there's just too many guys. Still was overwhelmed with 31 to 3. And like I said, man, the reason I love that also is because when we talk about our draft kings, you know, we always talk about our predictions. We talk about some of the player prop bets. We talk about, you know, just some of the money line stuff. And right now we're draft kings for all the first time users out there. If you haven't signed up yet, which by the way, if you haven't, what are you doing? But for all the first time users, if you use the promo code modes, you'll receive up to a thousand dollars in deposit bonus money. But if you, you know, live in a place where, you know, Sports booking isn't available. You also have the fantasy football app, which is phenomenal, giving out to what up to one million dollars worth of prizes every week. You told me you like that, right? What's wrong with it? I agree. I mean, I I came out. I started playing a little fantasy football. Man, you can't go wrong with that, baby. With that type of money, I love it. But switching back to my uh, original DraftKings thing, not the fantasy football, but just the sports booking app, man. I gotta talk about man my 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 prediction this week. So last week I had my two my two uh prop bets that I told y'all about. We hit on one, the other one got moved. So the one we did hit on was the Patriots to beat the Arizona Cardinals straight up, which they did. If you took that bet, you would have got paid nicely, man. I, I just I had that feeling, man. That West Coast to East Coast Cardinals have been trending down the past three weeks. I believed it was gonna happen. We also took the Steelers to win, but that game obviously has been moved. Not once, but twice now. So, as long as it doesn't move again, we have today. Now, they don't have player prop bets because you know I'm big on Big Ben. Anytime it's <laughs> over, under, touchdown passes, if it's that one and a half mark, I always like to over with him. And I would have loved that this game, but they haven't offered that. Now, they could change that, but as it stands today, they have not offered that. But what they are telling us is this, man. Steelers minus 10. So, Steelers are favored by 10 points. They got to win by 11 points to cover, Okay. Sitting at minus 110. So not the best odds, but still good money. And I'm very confident the Steelers are going to take care of Ben Sam win by more than 10. Just off of the things we talked about in the podcast, man, with the injuries, with Ben playing as hot as he's playing right now, I feel like the Steelers overwhelm this team, get the job done, win plus cover. So that's the one I'm liking right there. Steelers minus 10 with one uh, minus 110 for the odds as well, man. So shout out to DraftKings again. And shout out to everybody that, you know, has been following along, man, making some of that money. So, yeah, man. That's a simple bet. It's very simple, bro. It's very simple. Like I said, as it progresses, hopefully I get a prop bet because that's the thing where I really get my parlay action. But we don't have that available right now. So whenever that does become available, as it gets closer to kickoff, we're going to hop into that. You're looking at the Big Ben. You, so... 
sight unseen, not knowing the yeah. odds, would you just parlay the Ben one and a yes. half with the yes. win? Absolutely. No matter what the odds are, just because yeah. it would boost your odds a little yes. bit with it's a parlay. Not, yeah. when, when you parlay it, man, it, it helps out a big time way. So that's what I'm be looking for the most. And then sometimes it just depends to you might find another prop bet in there that's worthwhile. If I can see something with maybe Benny Snell with a touchdown or not, you know, that might be something else I'd be looking into because I feel like obviously we've seen how around the red zone, he's the feature guy. Yeah. And, I mean, it frustrates because I'm like, I would love for James to get those touchdowns, but they like to use Benny in those scenarios. Now with no James Conner out there, Benny's going to be that guy exclusively now. So I just think that he's another guy who's going to at least score one touchdown or more in this game. So if that was a prop bet as well. I'll be looking for that too, man. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. We got anything else? Any around the league? <laughs> man, uh, I feel like we don't, bro. I feel like we got it all. You sure? I, I feel like we do. Yeah, man. It, I was going to say, I got, I'll, I'll talk anything, but. Yeah, I feel like we do it. Dude, that, yeah, we cooked up a little bit in here, man. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. we, we cooked up. I think we're good. It's so. <laughs> all right. That was fun, man. So shout out to, to Deke Motes and shout out to. <laughs> Mode steak. Uh, so I gotta sit up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Let me scrub slow down. Oh man. All right, go ahead. I, dude, how do you sit like this? Bro, this is I, terrible. My my butt's about to fall off the chair. My back hurt. Right. I can't I can't do this. How do you do this? <laughs> alright, alright. So yeah. Um, <laughs> appreciate everybody for you know tuning in. Shout out to all the subscribers. And on until next time. Peace. <laughs>